Good afternoon to everybody. Thanks for clicking on to the Friday and final edition of the European Outlook for the working week. A busy weekend coming up here on the channel as always. Instead of it being Sunday, it's actually going to be tomorrow at the live stream 4pm and I hope you can join me for that. And then on Sunday, it's going to be a tropical outlook. So it's going to be a bit of a reversal of normal scheduling tomorrow. The, the reason why I'm going to be traveling on Sunday and then traveling by air on Monday. So there is going to be some changes taking place to the normal scheduling as we progress through the weekend and into next week. So I hope you can kind of bear with me on that one. There is going to be some pre-recorded content. There will be some videos produced as well looking at the European outlook next week. But uh, I'm going to be on holiday as of uh, essentially Sunday. So... I hope you can kind of stick around there. Like I say, there is going to be content available for you to tune into, um, but uh, it's going to be a little bit different to what would normally be the case. So uh, it's just to give you a bit of a heads up on that one. So uh, like I said, the live stream is tomorrow, Saturday at 4 p.m. If you're free and available, do check that out and interact. It would be good to see you on board with that and uh, and yeah there will be a link in the description below today's video for that tomorrow but uh, in terms of the uh, overall pattern we have got a frontal system moving in to the uk you can see here quite a nice curl here shown on uh, visible satellite imagery showing the frontal system we've got some fairly heavy persistent rain now moving in to scotland uh, across Ireland, Northern Ireland, Wales and into the western side of England as well. Still some warmth clinging on to the east but uh, this frontal system moving eastwards is going to allow the temperatures to start to freshen as we progress into the course of the weekend. So this is the current UK view here showing that frontal system a fairly sharp demarcation zone here between the thick cloud bank and clear skies. You notice here some uh, cumulus uh, moving in uh, behind the frontal system so much cleaner fresher air is getting driven in here um looking at the current temperatures um uh, as of 20 to 5 in the evening we do still have some warmth to speak about even 21 celsius in both kinloss and lossy mouth here 19 at my nearby station 10 uh, across to the west here behind the frontal system it's only 17 16 at all bay so you can see the fresher air behind the frontal system ahead of that front we're still talking upper 20s you can see here 26 27 celsius quite widely over east anglia parts of southern lincolnshire down through cambridgeshire uh, and in and around the greater london area we're very close to the 30 celsius mark in a few spots but you can see the fresher across Nar ireland northern ireland 15 16 17 and best up the western side of scotland and also west wales southwest england uh, and this this uh, this lower temperature profile is going to be even present across the southeast during the course of tomorrow. This is my new toy that I'm quite enamoured with here. The lightning activity uh, both across Europe but also globally. Um, I'm going to look at that a little bit more detail in tomorrow's live stream looking at some of the lightning activity around the planet. But we do have uh, once again another thundery day across parts of France. In and around the Paris area, very significant blow up of thunderstorm activity over northeastern Spain, southern France here, into the Alpine region in the southern flank of the Alps in particular, parts of the Balkan region. But this congregation here in the far east of France towards the German border here, we've got a lot of thunderstorm and lightning activity to speak about. Um, looking back at the, uh, the satellite image here, uh, which I uh, think I've actually closed, unfortunately. Don't know why I've done that. But uh, generally speaking, you can see the, the visible satellite showing the uh, convection, quite large convection. We've also got uh, some convection to speak about uh, over the past few days. Not so much today as the fresh air moves um, from west to east, but we did have uh, some enhanced CAPE. I said in yesterday's video, by the way, uh, CAPE value, CAPE meant the uh, cumulative available potential energy it's actually convective available potential energy i wanted to correct that one I, I happen to i don't often do it but i happen to watch the video back it's usually for quality control purposes it's not the, the fact that i like to hear my own voice by any stretch 
uh, in fact, quite the opposite. But uh, I, when I watched that back, I thought that is incorrect. Um, so it's convective available potential energy. And with the embedded features uh, running within the middle of levels of the atmosphere, we did see some converging winds, winds coming in from the east, winds coming in from the west across and meeting over the Midlands. Uh, that generated enhanced lift within the atmosphere, coupled with hot humid surface conditions as well, just generated a very, very unstable environment over parts of the UK. And we've seen some uh, month, a month's worth of rainfall within the space of a couple of hours in some spots in England during the course of yesterday. So anyway, we are going to be looking at the Indian monsoon. We're going to be looking at the, the tropics. There is a video that's going to be available later on this evening on the latest with potentially developing Debbie, which is going to make a, an approach on Florida and the southeastern United States. We're going to be looking at that specifically uh, in today's video later tonight, probably published between 8 and 9 p.m., so stay tuned for that. Also going to be looking at the latest on Debbie on Sunday afternoon. That will be a pre-recorded video, may I add. But I'm also going to be looking at La Nina and some other global stories that are taking place as well. So these are going to be some videos that I'm going to be producing over the next 24 hours or so that will be available and released next week. So something to look forward to with that. Antarctic warming, for example. Um and other very fascinating things that are going on at the moment around the world. So I would encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to hit that subscribe button. Like the content if you're uh, if you're enjoying it as well. I would uh, very much appreciate that. So the MJO is rotating into the East Pacific. We've seen an increase in activity here into the Americas, and also uh, that will continue to progress eastwards into the West Atlantic Basin, and therefore we need to watch for development of potential debris but also other systems uh, you know in the coming uh, days ahead looking at the jet stream this is off the gfs ensemble and you can see here the overview of jet stream winds on a global scale but i also wanted to show you essentially the type of situation that we can expect here in the UK over the next wee while or so here because it looks as if the jet is going to become uh, fairly flat and relatively strong for early August, uh, which is going to essentially dictate the type of pattern that we can expect over the next wee while or so here. Um, so just bear with me a little second. I did blow it up to make it easier for you to see, but uh, I also can't find the arrows to be able to kind of show you uh, what I'm trying to show. So you can see here, this is the jet stream um, at the moment here. We've got a deep area of low pressure just to the south of Iceland here. Strong jet stream uh, riding underneath this uh, area of rising air cyclonic uh, turning within the atmosphere. And you can see here, as I continue to play through into the weekend, the jet stream is generally coming straight at us from, from the Atlantic here, from a westerly direction. Then as, as we play in to the course of next week you can see here that we have some fairly strong winds exiting newfoundland and eastern canada we've got quite a sharp gradient here between cold to the north and hot humid air to the south that is generating some strong winds at jet stream level but again very similar to what we had in june and july combined is this very flat jet uh, kind of orientation oh, we've got low pressure in the north high pressure in the south here fairly strong mid-atlantic ridge of high pressure at the moment but it's the combination of a deep trough over greenland and some very warm juicy air underneath that uh, mid-atlantic ridge that is generating some very strong winds in between that and those winds are essentially coming straight at us uh, off the Atlantic here. So you notice here that as we push towards next week here, this is Friday the 9th of August here, we do have ourselves uh, situated kind of on the northern flank of the jet stream here. So therefore, likely to remain unsettled and temperatures close to average uh, for the time of the year here. But they, that's a fairly strong jet, by the way, for early August. The question mark is going to be what develops in the... Uh, in, in and around Florida, does it track northwards here and engage with the jet stream, enhancing that 
um, that contrast between hot, humid, juicy, tropical air and some much colder conditions here over Hudson Bay. That then would uh, allow the strengthening of the jet stream that's crossing out over the Atlantic Basin and pointing our way. Now, there is going to be flexing back and forward, north to south. There is going to be times where the jet kind of lifts a little bit further north, it possibly clipping the northwest of the British Isles. But then also there's going to be times where it's going to be fairly flat and fairly south. Depending on the position exactly will de determine whether you're average to slightly below average or average to slightly above average. And I think there is going to be variability. But look at how flat that jet is between North America and Europe as we progress towards the next weekend here. So this is the 11th of August here, Sunday the 11th of August. And it's just generally the same old story here all the way right through to the middle portions of the month. You see the flat nature of the jet um, seen by the GFS Ensemble. Now, looking at the GFS Extended here, this is total accumulated rainfall over the next couple of weeks here. And generally speaking, with the jet stream generally to the northern half of the UK here, always that bit drier and warmer further south. That means that we're going to capture a lot of the rain over west-facing and north-facing areas of the British Isles here. So this is all the way out to the middle of next week here. And the greatest amounts of rain is in the west and northwest of both UK and Ireland here. Then as we continue to play through here, you notice that we have a, the, the lion's share of moisture into the northwestern side of the UK here and west-facing. So it's a very, very flat west atlantic driven scenario as we progress through the middle portions of the month looking at the um, pressure anomalies uh, at the surface you can see again lower pressure to the north always that bit more in the way of higher pressure across the south here so this is all the way out the next weekend and you can see here that we've generally got higher pressure to the north uh, south uh, lower pressure to the north so this is off the GFS extended, like I say here. Looking at the temperature profile here, and you can see in these seven-day increments, this is day one through eight, it's actually showing below average for the majority of both UK and Ireland, with the exceptions of the southeast here. As we continue to play through this, it's still indicating below average surface temperatures here right the way through towards the end of the month. So the GFS ensemble continues to suggest that with a flat jet moving straight in off the Atlantic, uh, we will see subpar temperatures. And that would be very, very significant given the fact that we've seen a below average June and July combined here. I think you have to go back, like I said, to 2015, the last time we had a below average summer. I don't know when the last time we had a below average June and July. That in itself, but also the fact that if this model is correct, this would be a third month in a row below average for UK and Ireland, which is really quite significant indeed. So that's it for today. Lots to chew on. Like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you at, the light, um, at 4 p.m. for the live stream if you are free. Be good to see you then. Bye for now.